Please welcome Paul Lelus. Okay, has anyone eaten an apple in the last few days? Yeah, well I have too. And I must say, I like apples a lot. And we all know that to stay healthy, we need to eat more fruits and more vegetables. But you probably also know that chemical pesticides are used to grow our crops, to grow our fruits and vegetables. And these chemical pesticides, well, they are specifically designed to kill living things. And by using these pesticides to grow our crops, we are actually introducing them into our food chain. We are eating these chemicals. And of course, they say these chemicals have been tested on a case-by-case -case base. But the combined effects of these pesticides <laughs> are completely unknown. And unfortunately, this nice apple tops the list of most contaminated produce in 2014. And we don't only pollute ourselves by using these pesticides to grow our crops. No, we also pollute our environment. Because these pesticides, they can stay in our soil and in our water for many, many years. They say there is no alternative to grow our crops and we need those pesticides. Well, I am Paul Lenlis, chemist entrepreneur, and together with a group of scientists we have found out that this is just not the case. The story starts in 2009. We were developing a device in which plasma technology was used to disinfect hands. And I will first explain what a plasma is. A plasma is the fourth state of matter. You have solids, you have liquids, you have gases, and then you have the plasma phase. And to give an example of plasmas, well, our sun is a plasma. <coughs> and fire is a plasma, it's an ionized gas. And the northern light is also a plasma. And you probably all know the plasma television in which plasma technology is used to create an image on the screen. As a matter of fact, 99% of all matter in the universe is in the plasma phase. So there is a lot of plasma around. And within our project, we brought air into the plasma phase. And I will try to, to explain how we do that. Okay, well, if you have ice, which is a solid, and you add energy to that ice, the ice will melt and it becomes water. And if you then add energy to that water, the water will boil, evaporate, and it becomes a gas. So, and if you then add more energy to that gas, then you create a plasma. And that is exactly what we did with just normal air. We added electrical energy and created an air plasma. Well, within our project, we proved that hands can be disinfected with an air plasma. It's very good possible. Only, the difficulty is, how do you apply this plasma-activated air on hands? Because when you blow it on hands, well, then it's already gone. So you need a continuous flow of plasma-activated air. And you also need to suck those gases away. And that was quite difficult within our project. It was quite frustrating. We couldn't get that right. And at that time, I was also involved in some other plasma medicine projects in which the same plasma-activated air is used to treat wounds, to treat infected wounds, which works very well, by the way. And after a meeting with a group of scientists, I spoke to Peter Bruggeman, at that time a professor at the Technical University in Eindhoven, and I told him about our problem with applying this plasma-activated air. And Peter, Peter, he told me about a new phenomenon. He told me about plasma-activated air. He said, when you treat normal water with an air plasma, and you can compare that by with lightning striking on water. Here you see how we do that in a laboratory. He said, when you treat water with an air plasma, then the water obtains unique disinfecting properties. In the first 15 minutes, you have a very strong disinfecting liquid. And after 15 minutes, a mild but long-lasting disinfecting property remains. And Peter said, well, maybe this can solve your problem because Spraying a liquid on hands, for instance, is much easier it, because it stays on the surface. Well, I drove home from that meeting and I kept thinking about that phenomenon plasma-activated water. And one of the first things that came into my mind was, well, why don't you try to use this water 
to spray it on crops instead of those chemical pesticides. Well, with that idea, I called the Agricultural University in Wageningen the next day, and I told them ab about this idea. Well, within two weeks, we started our first experiments with a group of eight master students to perform tests with plasma-activated water. And the students, they performed several tests, but one specific test gave us a clear indication of the possibilities of plasma-activated water. The students, they bought a bunch of roses just at the supermarket on the corner. They split that bunch of roses into half, placed one half into normal water, and the other half into plasma-activated water. And what we saw was quite amazing. The roses kept in plasma-activated water stayed much longer fresh and much longer healthy compared to the roses kept in normal water. Well, how is that possible? Plasma-activated air prevents microorganisms to grow in that water, so the water couldn't get polluted with microorganisms, which is much better for the roses, so they stayed longer fresh. And that simple test was for us a clear indication that plasma-activated water it can disinfect plant material. So at that time we realized, well, this could be something big that we have here. So we quickly expanded our research with the Technical University in Eindhoven, the Agricultural University in Wageningen, and the Radboud University in Nijmegen. And indeed, we proved that plasma-activated water can be used as an alternative for chemical pesticides. But that was not the only test we performed, no. We also fed this water to the crops to see what the effect was. And again, what we saw was amazing. Here you see tomato plants, they, they, they were seeded at exactly the same time, given the same amount of water. <coughs> well, the right one got normal tap water, the other one the same tap water, but only treated with plasma. So the crops, they really like plasma-activated water. They grow much faster, are much healthier. And, uh, well, that was quite amazing. And we also found out that by using plasma-activated water instead of those chemical pesticides, well, you don't leave the residues that the pesticides do. And of course, well, you may ask, is it safe to use plasma-activated water? Well, the process of making plasma-activated water is copied out of nature. Because when it rains, and lightning strikes, it rains plasma-activated water. And when lightning strikes on water, on a lake or on a sea, for instance, well, at the point of impact, you have a lot of plasma-activated water. So, let's be fair, nature knows how to handle this, because there has been lightning on Earth for hundreds of millions of years. <coughs> and last but not least, using plasma-activated water instead of those pesticides. Well, that way we don't have to eat those pesticides anymore. So it's also better for us. And plasma-activated water can easily be produced on the spot, just there where it's needed. You only need water, air and electricity. No chemicals are added. Well, what if this apple was grown with plasma-activated water? Well, the apple tree would like it, because it's a natural fertilizer. And it's also much better for our environment, because it doesn't leave residues like pesticides do. And it's also better for us, for you and me, because this way we don't have to eat those pesticides anymore. Well, we are convinced that with plasma-activated water, we have found an alternative for most chemical pesticides and fungicides, which are used by farmers all over the world. <coughs> plasma-activated water, Nature's answer to chemical pesticides. Thank you.